See, everyone remembers Star Wars and Star Trek. But see, there's other sci-fi voices of shows and people that we might forget. So if you hadn't thought of Dollhouse, classic Battlestar, or Babylon 5 in a while, you, you gotta listen in. It's a sci-fi diner classic, voices from a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. It's a sci-fi diner classic, bringing you voices from the past. No, we ain't here or there. It's a sci-fi diner classic Don't give me no news Just give me interviews And nothing else No, nothing else Welcome to the Sci-Fi Diner Classic The place where we bring you interviews From a long time ago That appeared originally on the earliest episodes Of the Sci-Fi Diner So we want to bring you today An interview we did with a beautiful young lady Named Adrian Wilkinson you might not have heard of her, but a lot of you are going to be familiar with her work. She was the daughter of Lucy Lawless and Xena Warrior Princess, and she let it appear probably most notable in geek fame in Star Wars, The Force Unleashed as Maris Brood. She was in Force Unleashed 2. I don't know if she was Maris Brood or not. I should have really looked that up. But she was in Force Unleashed 2, and now... She's going to be appearing in Star Wars The Old Republic video game. She has also done voice work for Star Wars The Clone Wars as uh, just her role was called The Daughter. And she has appeared in episodes of Good Night Burbank, which, if you sounds familiar, we interviewed Hayden Black a few episodes ago on the Sci-Fi Diner Classic. Oh, by the way, she was the voice of Maris Brood in The Force Unleashed 2, who was killed in the first one, so it's kind of interesting. At least I thought she was killed. I played Force Unleashed 1, didn't play Force Unleashed 2, so it's kind of a... Uh, maybe you guys know better than I do. But this is Adrian Wilkinson, a phenomenal lady who I feel is kind of an up-and-comer and has her hands in the geek world, especially in the Star Wars world, well worth checking out, listening to this interview if you love Star Wars, and just finding out a little bit more about this lady. If you get a chance to see anything she's done or meet her at a con, she's a lovely lady, very approachable, and gave us a very good interview at Shore Leave 31, so you'll hear it live from the con floor. Hope you enjoy. Okay, you've won. The senator is yours. There's no need to kill me now. You are a slave to the dark side. I'd be doing the galaxy a favor. It's not my fault. Shakti abandoned me here. This planet is evil. It corrupted me. But you... You can save me. But just let me get away from here. And I'll turn my back on the dark side. That one. She reminds me too much of another young Jedi who turned to the dark side. You shouldn't have let her go free. You really think she's free? She'll carry the memories of what she's done here forever. So Adrian Wilkinson is with us, and uh, tell us a little bit about how sci-fi and sci fans know you. So uh, I've done several genre projects. Probably the most well-known is Xena Warrior Princess, where I played um, Xena's daughter. The role initially starts out as Livia, who's the foe of um, Xena, because she does not realize she's the daughter. She had been abandoned at birth, basically, in this very sci-fi plot twist. Uh, but Zena knows she's her daughter, convinces her, and it's sort of a, a big sort of rebirth kind of thing. Um, and, you know, just really jumped the storyline forward about 25 years. It was a, a really interesting twist in the show. Um, more recently, my most popular project is probably Star Wars The Force Unleashed, where I play the Jedi Maris Brood. And I love her. She's got this amazing backstory. She was a pirate. She is a Jedi. She studied under Shakti. She's just got this really rich history. 
some of which you got to see in the video game, a bit more that appears in some of the novels and certainly that appeared in the backstory that they created for her. So, knock on wood, let's hope that she appears in further projects that they do. Uh, And other genre work, I've been on Angel, I've been on the show Charmed. Uh, I did the first original sci-fi, the first originally produced movie for the Sci-Fi Channel, which is Alpha Force, also known as uh, Interceptor Force, where a group of us are fighting aliens. So, of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess uh, the other thing I would say in the genre is that I've, I've voiced a lot of video games, so I've probably done about 40 to 50 characters in various wow. video games. Oh, that's a lot of work. Well, voiceover <laughs> work, fortunately, is faster. So. <laughs> yeah. um, now, with the Force of Leash, for yes. example, that was your voice, but they also your body. Yes, it was also my likeness. And, um, how, and how did they do that? Uh, It's a combination of technologies. Um, We filmed the whole thing on video, but we also uh, did motion capture for all of our work. We, of course, did the voice work. Uh, We also did posing for normal camera stuff, just normal pictures as uh, reference points. But we also did something they call um, clone camming, which is just this amazing technology that... It's the weirdest thing to describe. Basically, there's a series of about ten facial expressions that are sort of extreme that you can make. And if you make those... those, uh, particular expressions using this technology and they take a picture of it that's fed into the computer and that covers every single muscle used in your face so the computer reads it and understands how your face moves when you're talking or moving or whatever so fed into the computer they can legitimately recreate what your body does there's also i can't remember the name of the technology but there's a another technology we used where it's just this crazy scanning machine we were in the middle of where it just, you know, to the end, like you cannot move at all or it ruins everything and it's just an exact replica, a 3D replica of your body. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's really incredible. It was a, a marriage of all of these different technologies and, you know, with me, I was lucky in that, um, you know, they had the choice of putting me in full makeup or not and we did both so I got to, you know, fully be Mary's Brood for a while and, oh, wow. and you know, it was an amazing process. The, my participation in it, you know, little bits and pieces took over two years uh, or all of the cast and you know, all of the main cast that were included in the motion capture technology. There were five of the lead actors that we all did that. So, wow. so yeah, it was pretty amazing. So you got to actually act the role then? Absolutely. Now, big question, did you play the game? Um, I'm the world's worst gamer, and I can't <laughs> pretend otherwise. Um, so I have had my, my hands on it for a few minutes, but I die very quickly. So <laughs> it, it's, it's just embarrassing. Right. But I've definitely watched others play it with success. So. Right, right, right. Which is, which of course, very cool. Yes. Well, tell us about um, a little bit more about your, your role in Xena. Um, um, you, you said you were the daughter. Right. Uh, is this kind of, when you find out that you are Zena's daughter, is it kind of like a Luke, I'm your father type moment? Or? <laughs> um, well, it was interesting because it was very top secret. They didn't, I, I got the role. I had booked the role not knowing that I was playing Zena's daughter. Um, I actually, the, the ironic twist that I talk about quite often is that when I was auditioning for the role, I thought there was no way I would get it. All I knew is I was auditioning for a nemesis to the character of Xena, and I thought I'd look too much like her so I'd never get the role. Obviously, of course, that worked in my favor. Right, right. Um, but I had the script in my hands, and that was the first time I knew what the actual twist of the story was. But, of course, I thought it was amazing. I mean, you know, it certainly ups the stakes of what your performance needs to be and how important the role is and all that stuff. But, right. but yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And in general, that's one of my very best ex- filming experiences in my life. I mean... It was such an adventure to film in New Zealand, to be in these amazing locations with all of these handmade costumes and these epic storylines and, you know, just everything. You're riding horses, there's fire, there's wind machines and rain machines and <laughs> 400 extras in battle scenes. And, I mean, it really was just incredible. So, Did that make it an expensive show to produce and with all that stuff, or was it fairly... Uh Maybe um, you know this, well, I mean, well, the actors aren't particularly privy to all of that, but I obviously they shot in New Zealand because it was it made such such an um, it just made it more affordable. I mean, well, yeah, especially well, at that time, the, the way the dollar was, and especially too, you have everything you need for Zena right there exactly. in that island. You know, just yeah, it was mountains, very beach, exactly everything. Oh, right New there. Zealand is amazing, and it was rare that we had to go more than about forty five minutes from the actual wow. studio to find everything we needed like that. So. so how long did you live in New Zealand? Um, over the well, I was on the last two seasons of the show, 
and it was something like 15, 16 months I lived there, not consecutively, but over the course of that, like, two and a half years. So I definitely got to enjoy my fill of New Zealand. I right. love it there. It's amazing. <laughs> Do you go back again if you had a In chance? a heartbeat. In a heartbeat, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, now, you mentioned that you had roles on Angel and Buffy. Mm-hmm. Tell us about those a little bit. Uh, Angel and Charmed, I did. Oh, Angel and Charmed. Um, on Angel, I play... Um, Uh, There was a flashback to the 1920s, and I played this flapper that owns a jazz club. And the long and the short of it is that I try to seduce uh, an angel character, and obviously not having any idea that he's a vampire, and he's having sort of a... He's having a moment in his life where he's deciding whether to be good or bad, so he's deciding whether to kill me, essentially. So it's sort of a pivotal moment in his history that they were exploring. So it was very cool to be, you know, absolutely authentic 1920s clothing, and, you know, it's just... for a girl, that's awesome. <laughs> so, oh, right. so my my cool. wife would love that. She loves that whole period stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, um, especially when you get back into the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. Some that's of that stuff great. is just... That's so amazing. And, I mean, it felt so authentic because we were working on um, the back lot of Universal, which has a 1920s era New York street. Nice. And we had all the, you know, the, the correct era cars and, you know, et cetera and so forth. I mean, they just really worked on authenticity, which made it just that much more special. That, that, that does. Uh, exactly. Um, and on Charmed, um, the season, uh, I was on the final season of Charmed, the premiere episode, the girls, you think that they've died, or the world thinks they have died. But they have lived, but they need to be able to exist without people knowing that it's them. So I was playing Melissa Milano's role. So it was, I was basically, I was Phoebe in disguise until they sort of let the world know that they still existed. No, was that difficult to, you had to imitate her without being her? It was a little bit. The, the more difficult thing is they were, as it was this beginning of the season, and they were sort of figuring out what they want to do with the season, they just kept rewriting and rewriting and rewriting everything. So my role and what it was going to be was changing for the course of about two weeks before we actually shot. And in fact, it was only about two days before we shot that I knew whether I was going to, which character I was going to be, because I had oh, wow. auditioned for all three of them and had to sort of learn mannerisms for all three of them. And there were a couple of us actresses that they were happy with, but I guess that since they were tweaking the script, they weren't quite sure what they needed and then that's when we like two days before that's when I found out that I was actually playing Phoebe and that yeah, whole yeah, thing. exactly how did you get into uh, started in my senior year of high school I was planning to major in international business and I'd always been a dancer but that was purely a, a sport and a hobby for me it wasn't right. something I was looking for as a career though I loved being on stage but I joined a theater group when I was 17 um, completely on a fluke just because I had time to kill and very ironically, the the very second day I was part of this group, they had a workshop going on where they had a casting director from Los Angeles. I'm from the Midwest. The casting director was coming to the Midwest to do this workshop. In the workshop, they had they filmed it as they were teaching us how to audition. And very long story short, they offered me a role on the soap opera because it was legitimate material. So it was my second day acting, and within that week, they offered me a job. Oh, wow. and I was 17. My parents thought it was a scam and crazy, so of course I was not able to do it. But that was the moment that changed everything for me because I suddenly realized you could actually potentially make a living doing that. And it was all the things that I loved and the potential to make a living. So I just thought, this is what I want to do. And I just started studying like crazy. And as soon as I graduated high school, I moved to Los Angeles. So no college training? Uh, no, no college training. I've done, I've done some classes. college, but it's been having nothing. They've been entirely separate. I've, t- I've taken tons and tons of classes, and I've studied with acting intensely, but not via college. Right, right. And in college, what I've done has still been more business and right. that kind of thing. Right, right. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's pretty cool. I forget sometimes that <laughs> it, it was pretty amazing. Right. So when you were doing Charm, did you get together with Melissa Milano to try to, when you were her, just, you know? Well, I, they gave us tapes to study more than anything. Okay. Um, so that's the main way that we, I mean, we definitely met them, but the way that it worked, we, of course, were never actually in the same scenes together. So we were never actually directly working together, though we met in passing and, and all that jazz. So it was me, an actress named Dorian Gray, and the celebrity guest star, who was Rose McGowan's role, was uh, Janice Dickinson. So it was the, the three of us sort of stumbling through it at that point. What's, what's, what's in the future for you? Anything uh, you can share? Uh, well, a few things, yes. I, the biggest things I can't 
quite yet share, which is driving me absolutely batty. <laughs> um, but I have several new video game projects in the works, um, the biggest of which at this point, they're the one that's the most exciting in terms of timing, is that in September or October, um, Alpha Protocol comes out, and I play the lead female, uh, Nina Tang, and it's an awesome game. Um, it's very, it's like, it's basically the Bourne identity as a video game, where you are Jason Bourne and doing everything. Yeah, but we're playing your character. Uh, well, no, my character, she's... She kind of plays multiple things, but she she's called the handler. So she is your go-to gal every time. She's in your intercom. Oh, okay. She's your face-to-face. She does your training. So I mean, and it's it's an it's an intense, very long game with it. You know, it probably covers twenty countries. It you know, I mean, it's a worldwide, jet-setting, epic sort of game. So it's it's pretty amazing. So that's Alpha. Alpha Protocol. Alpha Protocol. Yes. Um, oh gosh. I'm so lame that I don't know that. But it, it's, it might be probably, X, I'm guessing Xbox 360 and PS3. That's I what I would guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Maybe the Wii. Guessing. Maybe. Oh, okay. But. Absolutely. And then I have some other games coming up. Um, a couple of which I just got told, like, I talked about recently and I got in trouble for that, so I won't. Um, uh, Yeah, exactly. I didn't realize I couldn't talk about them. But um, uh, I shot an independent pilot last year. Um, It's called This Can't Be My Life. It's a hilarious cast. It's directed for the genre community. Um, They might be interested in this. It was directed by Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar Binks. Um, And so there's lots of celebrity guest stars. It's a really, really funny series. It's kind of edgy, so it's, you know, if it gets picked up by network, it would probably be something more cable or even, you know, like, who knows, like... Showtime or HBO or something like that, or else it would have to be redone because it's a little too spicy for regular prime time. Um, I produced a movie last year called Seconds, which we're now in the process of trying to sell. Um, it's uh, it's a more serious topic. It's not genre. It's um, it's about the epic the epidemic right now of young girls who cut themselves and just trying to like figure that out and open up a dialogue about it and that sort of thing. Have you read the book Cut? Uh, we have, yeah. That was uh, a piece that we definitely used as a reference. A lot of my, I'm an English teacher by trade. Oh, there you go. And uh, my students, you know, gravitate. The, the girls especially gravitate to that book. Right, absolutely. So, yeah. It's amazing. It's, I mean, I learned a ton. It's, I'm, I'm lucky. It's not something that I dealt with personally. But oh my gosh, is it epidemic? I mean, it, it is. is just everywhere, and it's. It's been really interesting to try to create something that tells a story that brings a little bit of understanding, but mostly the whole point of it is just to open up a dialogue between people who are doing it and figure out why they're doing it, but equally to to people who know them and are just trying to start a dialogue and have some communication and, you know, figure it out. Right. Are, you, are you also in it? Um, no, they, the, it, the way it worked is they actually offered me the lead role, but I was working on another project, so I couldn't do it the dates that they needed. But I came on as a producer because I was so interested in the project. So, yeah, it's, awesome. it was intense, but I'm really, we're, we're hoping to, it will probably go to festivals because I'm really happy with how it's come out, but we're also trying to sell it in the sort of educational medical community to use as a tool. So. Well, it sounds awesome. It sounds something that would really connect with students and they would be interested yeah. in it. And, um, I think so. I think so. I mean, it's, Is there a website they can find it on? It or? is. It's secondsthefilm.com or secondsthemovie.com. Sorry, I'm blanking out. But right can now. they find it out through your website? Yeah, absolutely. And, and your website is what? AdrianWilkinson.com. Right. And, and I've got a MySpace page and Facebook. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Twitter? Um, not quite yet. Okay, <laughs> I have so much trouble keeping up with what I've got that I'm like, I can't do one more yet. But so. the great thing about Twitter, see if I can sell you on it. Yeah, do it, do it. Is, is that that you can link it into your MySpace and Facebook so that right. we update Twitter and updates your MySpace and Facebook. That's true, directly. that's true. No, it's absolutely true. I guess it's also, I'm huge about wanting to share like my, uh, all of my businessy stuff. I still cannot, find, I cannot believe that people are really interested besides like my closest friends and family on like what I'm having for lunch or whatever. So I mean, right. you know what I mean? But I'm sure I'll get there. I will totally, because <laughs> I, I, I can't stay away from any of it for too long. I get sucked right in, so. Yeah.